So what is the Mandelbrot set? Well, the idea is very simple. You can define the following sequence for any complex number. Z1 is C, where C is your complex number that you've chosen. You define Z2 to be Z1 squared plus C, and so on, you keep on going. And then Z3 is uh, Z2 squared plus C, and you know, on and on you go. What we're gonna do is uh, I, I have like a, a plot, right? And then start with some random point C. So wherever I like click the mouse, <clears throat> that is C. And then the computer does the next 20 or so terms. So the computer will compute uh, Z squared plus C, which is just C squared plus C because Z1 is C. So the computer will compute, you know, C squared plus C. And then maybe the next point will be like, I don't know, C squared plus C quantity squared plus C. So if you do that, you quickly, and, and you know, maybe you're thinking to yourself, okay, I want to study this. Like one question you might ask, and in fact, the question that in fact defines the Mandelbrot set is for any given point C, you can ask the question, you know, if you do this complex recurrence repeatedly, does it explode or does it not explode, right? You might make a little thing like this and just to try and figure out what's going on. And you'll notice it's very kind of hard to understand. So, so for example, for this point, it looks like it decays, right? You can see that the sequence is kind of decaying for this particular point. Uh, and once again, I'm just connect, playing connect the dots with the first 20 terms doing z squared plus z, z squared plus z, z squared plus z, z squared plus z, over and over again. But, you know, you move it all, it's kind of hard to tell. Like, okay, so this one's in, oh, this one's not. This one looks like it's in, but then suddenly this one's out. It's very wild. <laughs> right? It's a very uh, weird thing that's going on. And of course, uh, this is the idea that defines the uh, Mandelbrot set. So it's very simple. You color the points black that uh, decay, right? Or, or just like never leave, right? And you color the points, let's say white, that uh, blast off, and you get the Mandelbrot set, okay? Um, so, so you can see that, you know, whenever you leave kind of the black region, the point blasts off. To infinity but whenever you whenever you go inside the black region the point kind of decays and that's the idea of the Mandelbrot set you just want to study which points blast off with this recurrence which points decay with this recurrence now you might be asking uh, where do the colors come from you know here the way the color is set up the uh, points that are black uh, don't blast off the points that are kind of like orange uh, blast off very slowly the points that are blue are going a bit quickly and you just change colors as you go further and further out. Actually, I leave it to you as kind of an exercise because it's not that challenging. One thing you can see is that if this sequence at any point leaves uh, the circle of radius two, it's essentially guaranteed that it's going to go to infinity. You know, you you start with a particular point, you know, you, it does some stuff, it does some stuff, it does some stuff, and then if it leaves the circle, and this is a circle centered at the origin of radius two, if your point leaves that circle as you do this, as you as you continue to do this, it's pretty much it's guaranteed that your point is never coming back. This little fact is what makes it possible for uh, computers to actually compute these. Of course, computers can't like test for infinitely many terms, you know, um, or like provide a proof whether or not the sequence is converging or not converging, right? Um, but what a computer can do is say is you know, do like 100 iterations, do like 200 iterations, and just check to see, um, I mean, one, one, of, one of two things is gonna happen. In 200 iterations, either the sequence at, w at the starting point you choose is going to leave the circle, or at 200 iterations, it will still remain inside the circle. And so what the computer is doing is basically, it'll, um, you know, let's say, the, so here I have max iteration set to 200, and so, at the 200 iteration mark, it sees, okay, has the point left the circle or has the point not left the circle? And you see here in this case uh, that every point that does not leave, you color black, okay? For every point that does leave the circle, you check to see uh, when it left the circle. You know, did it leave in 10 iterations? Did it leave in 20 iterations? Did it leave in like 35 iterations? And so on and so forth. Right? So you just write down for every point, did it stay in? Or if it left, uh, when did it leave, essentially? And if you make a note of all of this, if you just check to see uh, when a given point left or you know, if it potentially stayed in, then uh, you can color accordingly. So, so that's how 
potentially you can select a, a color scheme. So this is, by the way, this is called the escape time algorithm. Uh, so this is the escape time algorithm, and people use it to, to color Mandelbrot sets. Today, though, I am going to try and do something a little bit different. The idea is very simple. I'm gonna start with all of the points in some region. And then for each point, I'm going to iterate it once. The idea for how to visualize such a map is to use uh, images. That's the master plan. Your mind might not have its way with a four-dimensional geometry, but your mind has very powerful image processing capabilities. And so the way that you can color um, things so that you can understand what a map is doing, you can start with a picture, right? In this case, I have uh, concentric circles, right? Apply C goes to C squared plus C to every pixel in this box, and it'll land somewhere in the plane, right? It'll do some weird thing. And just color the points based on where they land. You put an image in the complex plane, okay? This is my image, okay? You also have a map, right? So you have a map that takes the complex plane to the complex. And uh, it's, like, it's like an inverse coloring. So you see where, where a pixel goes. If it lands in the image, give it the color, uh, give it that color. So for example, if the pixel, if the image is red here, right? If the, uh, sorry, if the image is like red here and this point lands on the red point, then the point in the original complex plane gets colored red. Sometimes my decision is to just have the image somewhere in the complex plane and just have a flat color for the rest of the complex plane just like a flat color, okay? You start with this image, right? And then this is what happens if you do C maps to C squared plus C once. You apply the map twice, it looks like that. So interesting, <laughs> and that's very beautiful. Okay, that's what happens if you apply the map twice. But what happens if you apply the map uh, three times? What about uh, four times? And five times? And six times? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. What do you know? What does that look like to you? <laughs> you, get, you get the actual Mandelbrot set. You might be wondering, or at least my next question was, if this is what it looks like with a disc, I was wondering what it would look like with a square. All right, you have this pastel box. So you start with the box. Right, and then if you hit next, that happens, okay? And then that happens, <laughs> that's so pretty. <laughs> and then, ah, before you know it, before you know it, this too looks like the Mandelbrot set. Huh, how about that? This is way prettier than the last one, actually. I really like that. What I did was I just tiled the complex plane with these images over and over again, like so. You know, the image here, the image here, and so on. And so that kind of guarantees that every pixel will have something interesting going on in it. Starting image is the same. And there you go. You can see the tilings now, right? Um, <laughs> You can see there's not just one copy of this uh, box. There's many, many copies of this box. And then you just keep going, right? Ooh, look at that. That's so nice. I'm honestly not 100% sure what these like bands are. I feel like they might be caused by some kind of rounding error, but it's worth remembering. Um, you can see what happens to uh, this Mandelbrot set zoomed in at any level, of course, too. So let's uh, let's try some of the other places that I wanted to kind of look and check. Keep in mind, what we're doing now is we're zooming into a different part of the Mandelbrot set. Let's see what happens. Okay, the boundary is starting to form. You can see kind of where the boundary of the uh, the Mandelbrot set is uh, starting to form over here. 
And uh, I love that there's coloring both like inside and outside the Mandelbrot set. So most of the time people draw the Mandelbrot set, the inside is black, so you can't really see uh, the iteration of the like complex transformation. But in these types of drawings, like you can see that uh, you can kind of see the boundary of the Mandelbrot set, but there's also this clear demarcation between how chaotic the map is on the outside as compared to how kind of nice it is on the inside. <laughs> of course, you know, I mean, it's if, you know, if, it's, if it's worth doing this kind of stuff, it's worth having like a little bit more fun as well. So one thing that you can do, of course, is you can do the same transformation to arbitrary images, not just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not just reasonable ones. So, okay, okay. This is what it looks like to start. Uh, I really like this meme of this person. I think his name is Nick Young, but I don't know anything about him. Uh, maybe. I don't know who he is or what he does, um, but uh, I like his confused face, and I thought it'd be really funny to put his confused face, like, inside the Mandelbrot hat, you know, trap, confuse him more, but, you know, you just, just confuse him more, you know? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I just thought this was hilarious. Off he goes. Into, into the complex hellscape, you know, that I have, that I have prepared. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I just found this so amusing. That was a great suggestion. <laughs> Thank you. Look at this, it's beautiful. Ooh, that's a really pretty picture. Right there. I like that a lot. Thank you so much to everyone that showed up, to everyone that stopped by. I'm going to be taking some time off. Uh, I'm just taking some time off for the holidays. So I will not be streaming again until the new year. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, whatever you're celebrating. I hope you all have a wonderful productive, enjoyable, relaxing new year. And uh, you're all amazing. You're all fantastic. <laughs> and uh, I will see you all next year. Peace.